Mars has some of the biggest landslides in the solar system, like the ones inside Valles Marineris. But not all mass movements are so massive. This week, Perseverance unintentionally generated what may be one of the smallest ones on this episode of Mars Guy. We last left Perseverance down by the edge of an ancient river channel, preparing to enter it in the coming weeks. Its most recent drive ended, unsurprisingly, among some small boulders and drifted sand, typical of the challenging terrain it's been navigating for many weeks now. Here's Mars Guy for scale. What is surprising is that the team chose to investigate one of these rocks, one that's barely big enough to fit the 20 centimeter spacing of the drill stabilizers. And there's nothing especially distinctive about this rock. I suspect that it was just a target of opportunity that was in the right place at the right time. As is the normal protocol, Perseverance first reached out its arm and pointed the Watson camera at the rock. The resulting image is interesting because what looks like a dust-covered surface also has a bit of sheen to it. Usually dust produces a matte finish. There are also two random flakes of rock. They look a bit like pieces of the coating that is so common on rocks observed by Perseverance throughout the mission. Then it was time to deploy the abrading bit to get a better look inside. The drill uses a combination of rotary and percussion action like drills on earth that are used for concrete and masonry work. Here's a time-lapse view of the roughly 20-minute operation on Mars, which starts with moves to assess whether the rock is stable and strong enough to handle the forces. The grinding produces a ring of tailings as the bit digs in, in this case about a centimeter down. I'll play it again to show how the vibrations drove mini landslides in the sand that flowed in ways similar to much larger landslides, which geologists refer to more generally as mass movements. But this is taking place over several minutes of time, so it's not just gravity driven. The drill keeps it going. Here's the view of the aftermath with MassCam Z. This shows the details of how there's a thin crust in the sand that fractured during operation. So the sand and dust, probably mixed with various salts and just a trace of moisture, combine to make a weak crust. There's even a little sinkhole that formed, which means that the sand was not fully compacted. Here's a before and after view from the nav cam, which shows that the sinkhole was not there before. It also shows that the abraded rock settled just a bit into the sand. Obviously, none of this approaches the magnitude of mass movements that help create Valles Marineris, but these little rover-induced changes in the Martian sand represent a sort of seismic shift in our ability to explore beyond Earth. <laughs> 